Hi everyone. In today's lesson, we'll be taking a look at how to calculate the zeros of a sine function. So in your notebook, please put down today's subtitle, find the zeros of a sine function, and please put in brackets, visible on trig circle. You'll find out in a few moments what I mean by this. Calculating zeros of a sine function is extremely easy, and all it really involves is some algebra, and a bit of knowledge of how to use your trig circle. So, with that being said, let's jump right to an example. For our first example, I would like to find the zeros of the function y equals 2 times sine of pi over 2 times x minus 1, subtract 1. When determining the zeros of a sine function, the first thing you should always calculate, and that you should nev never forget to calculate, is the period of the function. Just a reminder that the period means the length of one cycle. The period is given with the formula 2 pi divided by absolute value of b. So in our example, the period will equal to 2 pi divided by the absolute value of pi over 2, which gives us a period of 4. This means that whenever we find the zeros, the zeros will repeat themselves every four radians. We will need to make note of how the zeros repeat themselves when we write our conclusion. So for now, this will be used later. Let's begin to calculate the zero by doing what we do with every other function, setting the value of y to zero. Next, we want to isolate the actual sine expression itself, which means we need to move over the negative 1 and the coefficient 2. So let's begin by moving the negative 1 to the other side, the equal sign. That will give us 2 sine of pi over 2 times x minus 1 equal to positive 1. And next, let's move the coefficient of 2 to the other side, the equal sign. So that will give us sine of pi over 2 times x minus 1 equal to 1 over 2. Now that the sine expression itself has been isolated, and keeping in mind that sine of an angle produces the y value of the trig point associated with that angle, we must now ask ourselves which angle will cause the y value to equal to a half. Looking very carefully at your trig circle, you will discover that a y value of a half occurs at the angles pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. This means that, in our example, the entire expression pi over 2 times x minus 1 must equal to either pi over 6 or to 5 pi over 6. And that leads us to continue our work by simply stating that pi over 2 times x minus 1 can equal to pi over 6 or pi over 2 times x minus 1 can equal to 5 pi over 6. Let's first determine the value of x for which the angle will equal to pi over 6. Moving the pi over 2 to the other side of the equal sign will give us that x minus 1 is equal to 2 over 6. And isolating the x will give us a value of 4 over 3. This means that one of the zeros for the sine function will occur at the x value 4 over 3. Next, let's determine the other x value for which the angle produced will be 5 pi over 6. Moving the pi over 2 to the other side equal sign will give us x minus 1 equal to 10 over 6. And isolating the x will give us a value of 8 over 3. This means that the other 0 for the sine function will occur at x equals 8 over 3. 
Now keep in mind that these two zeros are the occurrences within one cycle only. So how do we account for all the other zeros that repeat themselves upon every new cycle? That's when the period comes into play. The period in this example was calculated to be four radians long. This means that the zero will occur every four radians apart. This means that for the first zero that we calculated, the four over three, it will begin at four over three and it will repeat itself every four radians apart. And to write this properly, we say that zero occurs at four over three plus the period and then we put an N where the N represents the cycle that we are in. So with this formula, we can actually calculate the zero at whichever cycle we're interested in, whether it's the first cycle, the 10th cycle, or the 100th cycle. We must not forget to account for the second zero being repeated every cycle, the eight over three. And we can complete our co conclusion by simply stating that the second zero, which is at eight over three, repeats itself every four radians apart for any given cycle. So, in its entirety, we can conclude that the zero begins at four over three, and then it repeats itself every four radians apart, and the second zero occurs at eight over three, and that repeats itself as well every four radians apart. Let's take a look at another example of this entire procedure in action. For our second example, I would like to calculate the zeros of the function y equals negative two times the sine of three times x minus pi over four subtract one. First, begin by determining the period, or in other words, the length of one cycle. This will be used in our conclusion later on. The period is calculated with the formula two pi divided by absolute value of b. So in this example, it will be two pi divided by the absolute value of three, which gives us a period of two pi over three. This means that the cycle in this particular function will be two thirds of pi radians long. And it also means that the zeros will be repeating themselves every two thirds pi radians apart. Next, I'm going to set the value of y to zero. Let's begin by first isolating the actual sine expression by moving the negative one and the negative two to the other side of the equal sign. That will give us sine of three times x minus pi over four equal to negative one half. With the sine expression isolated, and keeping in mind that the sine of an angle produces the y value of the trig point associated with an angle, we must now ask ourselves which angles will produce a y value of negative half. Using your trig circle, you should be able to detect that the y value of negative half occurs at the angles 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. This means that the entire expression 3 times x minus pi over 4 can either equal to 7 over 6 pi or to 11 over 6 pi. And this will allow you to continue your work. 3 times x minus pi over 4 can either equal to 7 over 6 pi, or the same expression can also equal to 11 over 6 pi. Let's first determine the value of x, which will cause an angle of 7 over 6 pi. Moving the 3 to the other side of the equal sign will give us that x subtract 
pi over 4 should give us 7 over 18 pi. And finally, isolating the x will produce a value of x equal to 23 over 36 pi. That's one of the zeros. It's the first zero that occurs in the cycle. Next, let's determine the value of x, which will cause an angle of 11 over 6 pi. Moving the 3 to the other side of the equal sign will give us that x subtract pi over 4 will equal to 11 over 18 pi. And finally, isolating the x will produce an x value of 31 over 36 pi. This means that the second zero that occurs within one cycle is located at 31 over 36 pi. In our final conclusion, we must state that these two zeros will repeat themselves upon every new cycle. This allows us to finally conclude that the zeros occur at 23 over 36 pi plus every 2 thirds pi radians, or they will occur at 31 over 36 pi plus every 2 thirds pi radians. The variable n can be substituted for whichever cycle you're interested in determining a zero for. It could be the second cycle, it could be the fifth cycle, or it could be the hundredth cycle. And that's all there is, ladies and gentlemen, to solving zeros for a sine function for angles that are easily detectable on the trig circle.